Welcome back, folks, to more Stasis Blood Totem, where we have Twinkle Twinkle Little Star playing from our boy Moses over here. And we've got a fair few things that we can interact Hello, around with. I am Moses. Oh. What is your name? Moses found another body. Getting a really bad feeling here. Just a little further. Okay, just a little further, eh? All right, well, we're going to examine this PDA first and see what's going on. <clears throat> okay, Donald Big Haskin, Captain. You will make all the indulgences to our representative Baron as if uh, he were Cain himself. Classified message. To the crew of Deep Sea 15. As of this 0800 hours, the mule has in initiated quarantine. Supplies and water will be rationed, so listen up, fuzznuts. If this is your first quarantine experience, crockery only gets washed once per day after evening chow. One flush only. Get used to the shitter smell or pucker up. You get one fresh water shower a day. I'll be keeping an eye on the meters. One meal pack per employee, company or commissioned per shift. These restrictions do not apply to corporates. We'll be adjusting rationing to accommodate their schedule and pro proclivities. I'll be hassling the mule for updates on the long... How long this will last. Hopefully it's only a drill like last time. It's been three weeks since the lockdown quarantine bullshit started. Somebody really humped the bunk. I miss you, Evett. I hope you are safe down there. 25 days in and still no updates. Not a word from Evett. I, I, I'm going to uh, subsidize this man's voice uh, to something a bit more piratey. The banging and shouting you've been hearing over the last hour would be unannounced arrival of a sick team. The ship they arrived on, the Sebastian, is moored to the DS-15 Dock 5, which is out of bounds. Do not screw with these guys. They stormed the facility like they were raiding a goddamn drug lab and had itchy trigger fingers for anyone standing in their way. These war chickens are taking orders directly from corporate and the rest of us are just in the way. I am available if you have any questions or concerns, but keep your eyes open for GD's sake. Keep your distance. Keep it together, Don. Your crew needs you. Evett will be fine. I've got more bad news. The weather service has alerted us to a mother of a large shitstorm approaching our mobile Chernobyl from the southwest. Our own ping jockeys predict we've got about nine hours before it hits, so tend to any hatches and bulkheads. You know the drill. Get those supplies strapped down and or brought in, and make sure your assigned cargo has been mag-locked. I want everything to be ship -shape. Let's not take any chances here. This storm looks like an angry one, and the grunt work will help us keep our minds off things. 49 log entries were erased remotely, and we've got... Ooh, couple... Blimey. Attention, with the storm rocking in two hours, we were given the marching order. Pack up your shit and get the dock five in 30 minutes, no exceptions. Move it! Kane's reign, someone at HQ didn't want us taking... talking a f... Oh, wait, hang on. Kane's reign, someone at HQ didn't want us talking and flipped a kill switch. All outgoing neck functionality is dead with a single exception, Kane Luna. It's the only place our hardware is talking to right now. By the looks of it, it's a hell of a conversation. Mule comms are still good, but our broadcast blackout means they're also cut off from the rest of the world. And I'm starting to think that's the point. The Mule hardline died. No more chatter from Kane Lunar screams for maintenance. Part of me regrets not boarding the Sebastian when it left. But I couldn't abandon my crew or Evett. It's nice to have her close, even like this. I keep wondering if I could have saved her if I'd forked me way down earlier. Rationally, I know they would have shot me. 
shot both of us. But maybe it would have been better to die together instead of just finding her too late. I'll meet me maker soon, waiting is agony. I'm just too tired of it. But I think it would be nice to watch the fireworks with her. To sit together one last time before everything comes crashing down, listening to our hearts beat in tune as we join the Nexus. A butchered reading from a captain's point of view. Bless his heart. Hang on, that was... Yeah, Donald Big D Haskin. The, the freaking bear singing that tune is creepy as shit. So first things first, we'll check this computer terminal over here. Every accessible surface has been covered in switches and dials to regulate this massive rig. There is a blinking light on this terminal. What can we interact with here then? This. Okay. Oh, now I click on the bear. Ooh, sentry gun. Override ROM, Moses, and security lockdown. What happens if we click on the sentry gun? Okay, apparently we're in for that. secure. Firewall override. Access granted. Improved. I see what you mean. He's actually useful now. Mac, please be nice. It's a damn toy. Not to her. He wasn't. Exterior and interior bulkheads are cycling pre-checks. Please be patient. Mag doors are gonna open. Oh god. And that could be a problem. Because we don't know what's gonna be on the other side of those mag doors. The high caliber sentry gun is programmed to automatically aim and fire at targets identified by its genetic sensors. Guns are not toys. Oh, we uh, know that much. Okay, so we... I don't think I've got anything that's going to slide in there. We can eject this. Oh, depleted power cell. <gasps> A depleted power cell. All things in the world need batteries to work. But do not put them in your mouth. <laughs> this is going Mac. Tell you what else. Shit, I didn't mean to switch to her. Damn it. Let's go back to the bear. I I meant to click on the fuse. Because that's going to Mac as well. Now before I click on anything there, let's see if we can charge up this battery. Pop our fuse back in. Way. Charge power cell. Get in. Ah, uh, looks like our fuse fried. So we've got a charge power cell now. Let's give that to the bear. Something has activated behind me. Something colorful. Hope loved colors. Hello, hollow table. A ghostly visage floats in silence above the hollow table. It appears to show a man-made structure on the ocean floor. Huh. Um, can I remove that? No, I cannot. Hello. Oh my god days mate the heart's still beating what the hell children should not try this we have a beating i don't have a real heart but i do have a brain 
I don't know, I'll, I'll just give it to Charlie. <laughs> the elevator is barricaded with timber panels and braced with welded steel plates. What's going to happen if I walk in front of this gun? Okay, apparently we've got no way to open this up for a minute. But it does mean maglock doors should now be opened. can't actually go back with you. Alright, for now then, we'll leave you up here. Because there could still be more to do here. Let's switch to Mac a second. Oh, wait, I don't think it's Mac that I'm going to need. <coughs> it's going to be Charlie. My bionic heart doesn't fit. Actually, pry whatever's there out? No? Okay, right, well, none of that is working. Oh, uh, actually, uh... I'm just combine the magnet and the heart. Nothing. Heart and the screwdriver? Nothing. Nope, wait. Actually, yes. Well, it was worth a shot. The biopower heart source is still functional. It's too bad this one is mostly meat and veins. My husband has apparently made it less pretzel-like. I think it was prettier when it was twisted up. Mac threw my previous screwdriver at a dolphin. I'm beginning to think he has anger issues. This rare earth magnet is strong as all heck. I think there was a maglock door <coughs> that Charlie could potentially access now. Security implant required. Ah, damn it. Maybe I do need to go to Mac then. Okay. Oh, I can't do anything with that now.
Maybe there's more I need to do with the bear. Okay, that's not working. Oh, wait a minute. I wonder if there was a... Is there a door back down this way? That I might be able to access now? Wait, what's this? Oh, that's PDA. Okay. Hmm. I could have sworn I had disabled all the mag locks though. Is there anything else here that I can interact with or should interact with? check back with this little lady no so I need to get I don't have anything to cut with One would assume that I need to take this guy's hand. Ah, that was creepy. Disabled security implant. I'm sure that's not blood. Yes, yes, it's only ketchup. I don't understand why his head freaking turned. Slap this deck. Hold up. Wait a minute. Now we combine that and that. Damn it. Hmm. Right, let's give that to Mac quick. <sighs> what is it? Separated the power source from this heart was completely embedded into the meat. Wash your hands, Mac. <laughs> so, Mac has removed that now, which means we should be able to combine it with the hand piece. That actually worked. What did you do, Charlie? Just mimicked the sound of a human heart to get this security implant to work. Nothing big. So smart, Charlie. I see why you keep them around. <laughs> Got, gotta love those, uh... <clears throat> Hang on, what we've we got here? So, nice! The implant can now be used to gain access to restricted areas on this platform. However, it appears that the remaining power is limited to a single use. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, 
Unable to cycle. Elevator doors. There it is. Found a use for that magnet. Well, we found a charnel pit. <clears throat> Clumps of dried viscera still clinging to the ground. The sight and scent of which make you your primal instincts spike. The hope that the splatter was caused by a dropped corpse is hardly comforting, but the alternative is too terrible to consider. Putrid excretions have stained the canvas sheets. In comparison to the surroundings, the diving bell operator's terminal appears to be rather antiquated. However, appearances can be deceiving. Dark shapes occasionally brush against the underwater lights only hinting at their size and form as they slide through the water. Oh, Jesus. I got two more bodies here. Like the ones upstairs? No. No, th these are worse. And they're in body bags. I'm getting really close to calling this, Charlie. Uh, don't get close. Call it. Leave and survive. Find another way to clear your debt. It is not worth all of this. The boarding bridge for the diving bell. The blood trail suggests that at least one of the bodies was extracted from the bell when it resurfaced. Undersea lamps illuminate the water's surface, shards of brightness flickering at the tips of the waves. Still beyond a few feet, visibility is consumed by the abyssal darkness of the ocean. The torn pages from an operating manual are doused with water, the text is barely legible, but it is apparent that the diving bell can be submerged at great depth. Wow. Uh, the diving bell? It's huge. I mean, this thing can take an enormous amount of pressure. How far down do you think they were going? With equipment like this? Deep. Very deep. Okay, not really much here to go on. Hmm. Can you hack that? Not by myself. Moses, I'm gonna need your help here. My Charlie. Okay, so we've got a blank data disk. Oh, hang on. A blank data disk. Can we get what we need if we put it in here? No. I don't think I can access this terminal anymore. Oh, no, apparently I can. Oh, well, I can't do anything here. So we have a blank data disk at the moment. There is still more to explore. What the hell? This isn't an oil rig, Mac. It's... some kind of lab. Yeah, I see it. It explains why there's no AIS. Yeah. They're operating off the grid out here. But why? Yeah, <clears throat> the last thing you want to do is find out. The wall tiling brings to mind the type of run-down laundromats found in seedy parts of town. Whoever worked here seemed to have left in a hurry, leaving papers strewn and specimens abandoned mid-analysis. Mac, look at this. It looks ancient. Like a fossil. And not human, either. I like this place less and less. 
So do I, mate. So do I. A row of transparent dividers separates this room from the next. While they do little to bar entry, they convey that only those with valid credentials or equipment are permitted beyond. An odd-looking skeleton, the cracked, jagged, childlike skeleton is displayed on a medical examining table. Both the walls and floor are covered in thick padding, presumably to offer protection to any valuable, fragile items of interest brought in for study. Unfortunately, leaking water is soaked into the padding, and the sounds and sensation of walking across are not pleasant. <coughs> Oh, hello. Uh, we've got some Charlie. Oh. What in Kane is that? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's ancient. And doesn't have anything to do with Kane. Are we entering Cthulhu territory? Various documents and scrawled notes blanket portions of the workstations otherwise populated by a collection of archaic occult textbooks, academic journals and digital cassettes. And a cage of carved bone wraps around a black monolith of unknown origins. <clears throat> Don't know what that was. Musical sting or something happening off in the distance. A large coin-shaped disc dominates this side of the room. The quality with which the stone has been sculpted suggests it was made with modern day equipment, though the numerous symbols emblazoned on the surface do not resemble any glyphs you recognize. A long curtain of plastic sheeting surrounds the interior, operating rooms or quarantine facilities. Neither association is a pleasant implication. The room is cold and unmoving, but the machinery is warm and ready to receive input from the personnel who will never work in this slaughterhouse again. What the actual... Damn, I need a blank data disk. Well, what do you know? <clears throat> now what do you need? Some kind of DNA sample? <clears throat> Guess we're coming back to this. Cover stone notes redacted a volcanic rock we only found on the oh cover stone notes redacted a volcanic rock we only found on the redacted redacted carvings made from an advanced redacted instrument redacted not redacted known huh look at these drawings I like these they are pretty you and I have very different definitions of pretty bear. can't quite the bone is made of a volcanic something or other <clears throat> appear to be good cutting not entirely sure no this looks like it might be information we could possibly need FFGHOX XXI <coughs> And we've got X ray slides. There is something in that casket. I think that's what was on the table. Penetrating photographs of the sarcophagus have been shuffled amongst the paperwork. The images reveal a deformed body encased in the stone prison. <clears throat> Let's interact with the odd skeleton. Well, 
Whatever it is, it was human-like with a big brain. <clears throat> Let's check that PDA. K. Elspass. Biochemist. <clears throat> Looks like she's been experimenting on herself, damn. I'm slowly growing accustomed to my condition following the unfortunate incident. In many ways, the noose hanging over my head has sharpened my intuition and emboldened my drive. I am beginning to accept that it was a necessary catastrophe that allowed me to push beyond my previous capabilities. The downside is that I have no one to consult on scientific matters. The other research staff here dawdle in minor work while the rest uh, are goons trained only in manual labour. My closest peer is the occult expert Baron. Still, we are forbidden from addressing him directly or making eye contact, which is a ludicrous authoritarian move. Still, even in isolation, I have ideas. I've been thinking about how I can turn this curse of mine into a boon. I'm curious to see how it would affect other biomatter. Uh, watching the cook sit at the edge of the platform and fish gave me an idea of where I could find suitable test samples. I may not have access to that sexy mule research, but my position affords me some perks, including shared samples. I have been analysing a fascinating sample from Alpha's old Sheila project. Uh, based on the generated model, its vestigial organs appear to have no use. The eyes were hollow, sacks of fluid, and the legs were of different sizes, but Sheila is not the Holy Grail. It is merely an evolutionary stepping stone. The uh, Therapedia Sashleniasis... Ah, fucking long words, bitch. Uh, 139 is our salvation, but it remains beyond my grasp as a mere cane supplicant. Mr. Darren, while I understand that proper procedure must be followed, your ignorance threatens my research and well-being. Unfortunately, corporate is currently preoccupied with organizing the Omega construction, so I'm forced to debase myself by going through you to obtain my injections. Don't confuse these for some partial dietary supplements. Uh, without them, the nanites in my blood would corrode my bones to the point of shattering, after which the same nanites would perpetually rebuild the shards into increasingly hideous forms. It is not a pleasant experience, nor one that correlates with a long life expectancy. If my calcium injections aren't on the next shipment, I will ensure that your contract is determined, terminated and your mother is thrown in the gutters. Uh, label these as the highest priority. My life and your continued employment depend on on it. Is this her body on the table? I wonder. I don't mean to gloat, but my work has yielded impressive results. The introduction of my nanites has revived cells within the bone marrow samples, and they continue to divide at a healthy rate. Moreover, the resultant growth continues to expand exponentially. It will soon be complex enough to allow for an initial biological analysis of the retrieved corpses. I managed to synthesize my very own PS-139 from the remains brought here for Baron. Watching the bioculture mature fills me with pride and relief. I will mark my milestone achievement, one of the few I've managed to s since we first arrived chasing those signals. I also admit to some dark pleasure in knowing I was right to say stay despite Dr. Alcabor's attempts to replace me with Dr. Yamada. Unfortunately, although predictably, others are covetous of success due to the shifting scope, the experiment and all relevant documentation will be reallocated and escalated. Baron will be taking ownership and the sample will be moved down to his lab. I, I doubt I'll get credit beyond a footnote. Fortunately, owing to my meticulous work process, I have copies of my work that I'll be keeping. If Kane isn't interested in giving credit where it's due, I'll find someone who el someone who is. I've made contact with an old friend on the mule. He is eager to share his findings with me. Listen here, you little bilge turd. 
I will personally report you to Baron if you improperly dispose of my specimens again. I won't have the base born interfering with company business. I should have you thrown in the brig. I demand to know who else was involved. As if working with his highness Baron and his proteoheliosis problem wasn't bad enough, nothing functions properly on this floating rust bucket. They are all interfering weasels here. If Kane catches a whiff of my side projects, there may be a problem. I've told my connection, Ra, that our clock is now ticking. Mr. Cameron, I need you to hurry to my lab. The evacuation will wrap up within a few hours. Mule operations have concluded and the bell has been recalled. As such, you will be required to carry specific equipment aboard the Sebastian. I am currently preoccupied with processing and collecting crucial documentation, but I have earmarked the relevant machines for your convenience. Consider this your apology to me for disposing of my core data samples. Oh yes, your friend squealed like a pig when I applied the right pressure. If admission of guilt is beyond your character, I imagine the promise of escaping several weeks of water and food rationing will be an appropriate motivator. PDA K Elspass 87112 cloned to the device 00813AB. I scribbled the code to the Chimera mass storage unit on one of the reports, and I cannot find it for my life. But not to worry, I have the research encoded on a data disk. I'm leaving this PDA as a backup should I return. Onward to a bright future. Chimera mass storage unit on one of the reports decode is that one eight zero X-ray slides. Seven seven eight nine five. Or no eight nine six. I think that was. Okay, so I'm gonna need a pen. This bit's actually going on for a quite a bit longer than I expected, but there was a lot to do. So we've got 180. We have what looks like 09. And 7789. Five or six. I'm going to go with it just being this one, but I could be wrong. Let's just try seven, seven, eight, nine, five. Oh. So it's only th four. Ha! Chimera mass. Uh. Ew, I'm sure I saw the amorphous blob move. I suspect that they grew this from the bone marrow extract from the weird looking skeleton. Okay, so now we've got the encoded data disk. Take the chimera mass back as well. A sad face. 
The disc contains the genetic structure of the weird meatball thing. I know what I do with this. I know what I do with this now. I'm going to give this to the bear and this to the bear. Next. I save it and I'm going to do I'm going to try something here. There is a possible chance I can get the bear destroyed. So if I input that... If I walk out in front of it, I've got the mass R. Oh. For a second there, I thought I could like trigger a, a death in the first, in, in the original, or in the first stasis game. You could actually uh, commit, um, you could unsubscribe from life in several brutal ways. What the hell was that? I opened a door. A door? What'd you use, dynamite? Guns are not toys, Mac. He has a gun now? What are you complaining about? He didn't shoot you. Not yet. I am a very smart bear now. <laughs> yes. C concerning. Right, anyway, well, we've opened a door. A door to where, I wonder? I guess we'll have to find out in the next episode. Because, uh... That's the end of this one for now, folks. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to uh, seeing you again in the next one. And until then, bye-bye.